checked seal with gas, checked seal with gas, checked seal with gas, checked seal with gas. Alright, looks good. Appears to be audio. Alright, I think we're good to go. Okay, hello everyone. If you were with us last week, you'll know that we were working on a game in uh, Wolf JS. And we lost all of our work around um, an hour and a half in, something like that. Uh, I went through the effort of watching my own VOD and typing the, all, the whole game back in. Luckily, it was recording, so I actually had a literal video backup of what it was doing. Um, uh, and I, while I was at it, I was trying to test just these performance issues to see why, like... Uh, we get uh, sprites blinking in and out. And you can see it's still happening. Like the coin and um, my character are still blinking in and out of existence on a regular basis. Um, so what I decided was, and what my research told me is that WolfJS, um, since it was designed as a tool for um, more or less emulating Scratch inside of JavaScript, uh, it's it's not really set up to do sprite based animation where you switch sprites constantly. Uh, in fact, um, it like it doesn't have anywhere like the, the full suite of costume changing blocks were never fully migrated to Woof. As you can see, there's only one. We don't even get next costume or last costume or previous costume or random costume. We don't get any of those blocks. It's a curious little absent part of the library. So anyway, and because as I've determined, uh, and, and like a second reason why I think that this isn't going well is that this set image URL appears to be um, what's called lazy loading, which means that uh, lazy loading is where uh, like you have a loading spinner that spins until the the actual image is trying to load is fully loaded and it shows it. And so like when I switch to one particular sprite, it unloads the previous one and then spends a moment loading the next one. And that's essentially what's going on here. It's uh it's going through them all and then one of them is essentially cached. watching it yeah and it and like one of them you know the internet doesn't load it quite as fast as the others and it just doesn't uh, you know just little blips in the internet network where it doesn't load as fast and it randomly skips that one because it's still in the loading state what by the time it gets to the next image and this happens to uh, I, what I what I saw mostly is that it happened pretty consistently at the same time with both characters Ideally, what we would do is, if we were to fix this in WolfJS, we would need to store all of the images for all of uh, the different sprites and keep them all loaded at the same time. And instead of updating which sprite we're showing, which, which image file we're showing, we would need to instead update all of the image sprites' X and Y's and all of their widths and heights and stuff to match sort of an abstract idea of a character, and then have it switch between which of those images is just currently visible. I suspect that would maybe fix the, um, maybe fix the performance issues. Uh, so we're gonna try that. If that doesn't work, I have um, a coding sandbox set up here for uh, migrating it all to a web project, but we're gonna try this first. So, we'll start with the coin sprites. Instead of storing um, the URLs in this coin sprite array, we are going to store actual um, image objects. So we're gonna call this one new image. 
URL. Oh, wait. I did that. Parentheses the wrong way. Close that. All right. Well, I'll, the only property we're going to set for each one is uh, the URL. So just like this, basically, for all of these. We're going to do our testing with the coin sprite, and then if that works, we'll go ahead and do it to our main character sprite. Uh, I need to turn off auto. Gosh. I need to turn off auto run. Okay, so we have converted the coin sprites to image objects, just like these here. And I believe the show hide quality of things. Yes, we can call show and we can call hide. Uh, so we want these all to hide. So for var, uh, actually, we, is it possible to set that in the constructor? I don't think so. So we'll just go through and hide them. I could take guesses as to how to set that in the constructor, or even if such a thing is possible. But we'll, we'll just write a loop here that does it for us. Uh, var sprites in coin sprites. Sprite dot hide. No idea what's going on with the screen, but it's okay. Okay. All right, so our coin is going to be represented by a rectangle, I guess. I guess we should start model the actual coin as essentially its collision box. So yeah, a new rectangle that just has a background of the image. Uh, I guess you don't need this anymore. I'll give it a width and a height though. Width. 50, height, 50. We'll, we'll adjust it as we can visualize it. Coin does sprite index, that's fine, that's fine. Okay. Oh, this is gonna be so Like, what if we have multiple coins on screen? <sighs> All right, one more change. I'm gonna add this to each of these. This is so far beyond what um, any sort of WFJS student should know how to do. We're just testing. If like this works, then we can walk it down a little bit. Uh, but I'm changing this from being an object to a function that creates an object. That way, it's essentially creating instances. Anyway, oh, in that case we don't need to do this. Okay. 
this is not going to be different at all. We got to do like this coin. Uh, sprite zero becomes equal to coin sprites zero. O of the O. To do this every single coin. In fact, I'm going to make a function for this. Coin. So I don't ever have to do this all over again. Okay. So it creates a rectangle. That's where the rectangle goes. And then we go coin sprites of one. Oh, we need to call the function coin dot sprites two coin. Why doesn't that autocomplete non <laughs> um, case sensitively? Like I have to type capital C in order to get the autocomplete for coin sprites. Super annoying. Sprite three from school to coin sprites of three. And last one. Coin dot sprites four. Coin sprites of four. Okay. So that creates a coin with its own unique um, images. Oh, I need to coin dot sprite zero dot hide. These all need hides. Two, three, four. Okay. Actually, I'm gonna change how I did this. Coin the sprites. Let's go to an array. I'm gonna use an array instead of this. Um, ex this language. That way, we can iterate through them a little better. Push and sprites of four dot head. Okay. Very good. We can also move this inside. So the only thing that's changing here is instead of setting image URL, I thought that if was part of it, that's different. Uh, 
so coin dot sprites of hide this exact line again without the increment dot show. So this is a post edition. Uh, so this func this uh, call right here of sprite index plus plus actually returns sprite index before you add one. It just combines the lines. I'll probably just I'm fine, fine. Like just because it'll confuse people undoubtedly. Fine. All right. All right. We'll do it the oh, the easier to read way. Okay. So it's hiding the current sprite and showing the next one. We also need to move it to uh, the location of the rectangle. Make sure it's always on top of it. Do that in a forever. For var um, sprites in coin dot sprites. Why did it tabulate that like that? Thank you. Uh, sprite dot x becomes equal to coin dot x sprite dot y becomes equal to coin dot y and for the moment we'll do sprite dot width becomes equal to coin dot width their collision and rendering box might be different at some point but this is good enough for the test I don't keep wanting to add a t coin dot height okay I think this is good enough to Attempt. Let's see what happens. Absolutely nothing. No errors though. Just oh, because we never created a coin. Coin. Okay. So that's the rectangle. And presumably that's the coin that's the Oh it erred. Why would that happen? Yes, let's go after. All right, once this cause it skips zero. We need to track the old sprite index. I think it goes here. That's where it goes. Yeah. Okay. What's your beef? Yeah, that's fine. There's still an error.
I mean, it says there's an error, but we're getting all of the frames of the coin. And no blinking, in fact. Is this just old? Let me move this down a line and rerun it. Yeah, there's no error. Okay, it's just a weird mistake. All right, well, this does in fact seem to have addressed the issue. Now there's just the question of whether or not this is too complicated for a student. Since we're using, again, like, Is this, is accomplishing this idea too complicated for a WolfJS student? Like obviously they won't need to use an inline function like I did or an arrow function as apparently it's called. I grew, I grew up having calling them lambdas and they are not new. And I eventually, nowadays I usually call them inline functions or anonymous functions. Yeah, I, I started calling, like when I first learned about them, I called them lambdas based off of their first implementation in C Sharp. Uh, and then I started calling them inline as other functions, other languages started using them. And anonymous, I, I think anonymous is my favorite, but just for the record, I'm talking about these. These are called, I believe in JavaScript communities, they call them arrow functions. And it's just a shorthand, it's shorthand for this. Function, blah, blah, parentheses, see the parentheses here? And then bracket. So I'm essentially storing functions inside of coin sprites that create a new image and return it. But um, yeah, a WIFJS student, like obviously they don't need to do it as efficiently as I did. Like maybe they don't use an array. Maybe they actually, they obviously probably won't use um, the uh, arrow functions, but maybe they can be expected to type out, you know, function um, coin, not, not capitalized coin sprite one and have that return the first coin sprite and then they could use a combination of those to do what I'm doing. Um, actually that's beyond with JS as well because they don't expect you to make, let me see, is my block more blocks? Okay. They do have function creation here. Yeah, uh, I don't know. It's a pretty elaborate, like we don't even teach um, how to use my blocks in our scratch curriculum at the moment. And this is like heavy use of my blocks. And if they do it the way I was doing it before with um, either setting the sprite to like any kind of deletion and recreation as the process for changing the look of something is going to result in the performance issues I was having, which the deletion and recreation of um, a sprite or the changing of its URL are going to be the only ways that they expect to know how to do it. Or the, the only way that we will be expecting them to know how to change it because it's literally here in set image, or oh my gosh, uh, costume. Like this is what we're teaching, and this has performance issues. I think it's okay for the student's version to end up with performance issues. I think that mine should not have those because we're, we're trying to sell them on the look and feel of a game. Um, I think it's okay.
like if there's kind of blinks in and out of existence then they'll probably just like deflect it as being a bug in their code that they don't want to fix um i'm sure there'll be some cases where they want to investigate and discover a lot of issues that are out of scope maybe that'll be good maybe that won't I think that in general the easiest way to address this is to fix it on the whoop.js side. So I think it's okay if I keep moving forward. Uh, I guess let's do it. I'll um. All right, I'm gonna collapse the coin sprites. Uh, one thing. I'm going to change the function to require width and height. X. Y width height and I also need to adjust zero fifty fifty. Oh, you know what? I can't help but notice this coin is at zero zero, but the rectangle is at fifty fifty. Is it not updated? It also does not appear to be the correct width. want to see what's going on here. Turn off the other debug. Oh, I, I very slightly changed how um, debug code is written. Don't think about it too hard. These two, um, these two trues right here, it was just debugging something else. Where is... Debugging the collision code, in fact. Which I just wanted um, more accuracy with my collision. Is the only reason I did it myself. There is actually an intersects function. That the students can use. So this is all fine. Okay. Let's run this, we can see what's going on here. Undefined and zero. Okay, I expect that's what's going on. What is sprite? Sprite is removed? What? Sprite is removed. Is removed.
up, up, up. I don't know what's going on here, so we'll just do it this way. Okay. Let's see if that works. Zero, zero. It's, it appears to have been resized. If we move it to, say, 100, it's over there. Okay. That's fine. Uh, I do want the rectangle to not be visible, though. What happens if I make the rectangle invisible? Line.hide. And the coin is there. Okay, we got it. Performance looks good, no blinking. Okay, let's minimize this and do the same thing for the character sprites. Character sprites have been converted to functions. Uh, so here becomes equal to a new rectangle, and this rectangle is actually going to represent um, the bounding box. Similar to did it before. So the care sprites are um, not an array, they are an object. Let's repeat for all the different sprites. Two. Actually, we should do 
this one. So let me just change the number. Two, two, two. Grab left. Left run, grab this one. Left run one, okay. And then left run two. Boo, 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 boo. Sprites are set up and hidden, uh, so we don't need bounding box anymore. Yeah, we don't need this. We don't need this. Dead. Uh, we want to care dot show, mm -hmm. and then after one second, care dot hide. That'll show the bounding box since we're using that as the actual thing. Where are we? Okay. Okay, then we need to model its um, we'll do that here, I think. I was just trying to think about whether or not I would ever need to use object.keys again outside of this exact loop. I don't think so. In case I wanted to make a variable out of it. So yeah. Um, so care.sprites uh, of objects.keys care.sprites of I, I guess within this loop, I'm going to use it like three times. Fine. Um, call it spike keys. Uh, we have to do this because you can't um, iterate through. At least you shouldn't iterate through. Uh, what happens if you iterate through a loop, actually? JavaScript. Let's just see real quick. Uh, yeah, okay, that's why you don't use that. Okay, they use object.keys, that's what I thought. All right. Yeah, you shouldn't do that. 
so we need care dot sprints. Sprite keys. equal to care.x own sprite sheet instead of doing all this but clipping is something that definitely would move us into um, web like well I, I really wanted to make a wolf.js project because every time I make a wolf.js project something stops me I've made lots of scratch and web projects but wolf.js just something always kind of like happens that stops me Okay, so that is going to handle keeping the sprites on top of um, the character, which is a rectangle. Uh, and then I, I have a feeling we're going to want to track last sprite. Care dot um, sprites dot last sprite. In this case, uh, last sprite became sort of care dot sprites dot idle. Okay, so then instead of this stuff here, we do dot last sprite and care dot sprite still last sprite sprite dot last sprite dot hide sprite dot write dot show Should just be like that. Care dot sprites dot last sprite. Oh, I need to dot hide. I need that middle line there to update the last sprite property. Here.sprites.lastsprite sprite is equal to here dots. My hand was off a character. Sprites dot right. Alright, and then the default exactly the same care dot sprites dot 
last sprite. Dot hide. I feel like I should functionize this. Yeah, let's function it. Function set sprite. It's going to take the name. It's going to do. We're going to do this a lot. Set care sprites. Uh, this was right. Set cares right left. Which one? Right run one. Yep. Right run one. And this one is right run two. Gosh darn it. Run one. This one is left run two. All right, set everything. fix the collision to not use bounding box anymore. Sorry, this is somewhat tedious if I'm going quiet. Um, this should all just work. Like we needed the bounding box before because um, uh, using the character sprite itself gave us a bunch of padding, whereas we don't necessarily want that to be represented in our collision. And we don't need and so we created a second um, object called the bounding box, 
which was a rectangle, a hidden rectangle behind the image that we'd use to calculate collision. But now we ha have a base object that already is a rectangle, so we can just use it as the collision box and draw images behind it. And we should end up exactly the same. It's the exact same outcome. Da, 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 da. In a lot of ways, this is ending up a lot simpler, all because of heavier storage of images, instead of loading images at every frame, which you shouldn't be doing. Like, if you change the um, source tag on an image during runtime, it shouldn't unload the previous image. It should, you know, keep it in case you switch it back, or you know, re-render that exact same image. That happens all the time. Like, uh, you know, like th the see more page, the see more button at the bottom of search results. Like you go to Amazon, you search for, um, you know, um, what do you <laughs> what do you search for on this? You search for a microwave. It uh, loads has a loading image that it puts in place of all of the different um, shopping items for a brief moment. Then it loads in the actual image of what it is, and presumably that loading image is then unloaded, and you click see more, and it needs that loading image again. But because it's already been loaded onto the page and cached, then it's just there instantly. Uh, what was I doing? Is that good? It looks good. Why doesn't that like it? Why is it already defined? Oh, that's fine. That's, that's, yeah, I'm just using that there. Okay. Um, make sure everything else looks good. Why did we decide the width and height of the bounding box before? Did I already delete all that? Kind of wish I still had it. All right, let's see what happens. Ready? <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, I do have control of this rectangle. And it looks like Okay. Looks like the actual image is changing correctly. It's just not on top of me. Which is this stuff here. Um, so let me get rid of the debug text from earlier. So we can figure out why it's not following. Debug text is equal to. Uh, we'll take a look at this first. Sprite keys of I. I see nothing. Why do I see nothing? What is sprite keys? Sprite keys is also nothing. What? Okay, we got something else going on here. Oh, it'll never go in there because presumably sprite keys is, is some kind of failure of the person. That's an object. Why is sprite keys an object? It should be an array. 
because object dot keys literally returns an array. Oh, right. Sprite keys. Uh huh. Eight. Yeah. Uh huh. Oh my, okay, I know what the problem is. Sprite keys dot length. <laughs> there we go, all right. Well, we have a new performance issue. The image is lagging behind her. What if we um, adjust the positions at the end of the motion? Do you think that would improve it at all? Take all this and move it to the bottom. Let's find out. There we go. There is a very faint lag, but it is, it's not. Okay. This looks good. Um, one thing though, I do want to plus twenty adjust our size. <laughs> uh, plus thirty height looks like plus ten or so. Change. Let's right quick. Color pink. So it's easier to see. Oh, excuse me. Excuse me. Seem shorter than it's wrong. It's fine. Uh, okay. Let's adjust its five. This we want to change, sorry. Five. That's pretty good. We want her to be a little taller. Let's try 20. Yep, yeah, it looks good, just her feet are a little in the floor. to be a little more narrow. Could try 18 or so. Mistake on the left's right. Where, where was that? <whistles> boop, boop, boop. Left run, left run two. 
left run one, left run two. Don't apparently the mistake isn't there. Set care sprite left run two. This looks pretty good. All right, I like this. This looks good. Okay, uh, let's make sure this all saves so we don't have a repeat of last week. for a bio break. Oh, then we'll get keep going. <laughs> Okay. All right, we are ready for new development. Uh, all right, now let's turn off our collision box. I believe it is working. Care.hide. I didn't actually click that, so I'm a little curious as to. Do we want to spend the time to do a projection instead of acting on current position? See how she like there's a brief frame where she's in the ground. Wouldn't be too hard. Let's do it. Uh, so I want to instead of uh, calculating collision based on where I am, I want to calculate collision based on where I'm going to be. So, basically, we take this collision code, move it to here uh -huh, uh -huh. shrink it again because we'll do this in a moment but you can see right here we're moving care X and care Y
instead of moving Carrot X and Carrot Y, we want to discuss a new variable we'll call care projected X and care projected Y. perform a collision based on it. Yes, yeah, so we've calculated all this this velocity. We're creating a fictional um Yeah. All right. We're creating a fictional position where the character will be, and if it collides, instead we want it. How does this any different? How does it, okay? This is supposed to be different. Why isn't like if it collides, then we set its real position or its projected position. If we're just creating this projected position variable, doing um, a collision on it, and then just setting the real position to it anyway, what's how is that any different? So it's supposed to be essentially a cycle behind. So we set the position. I see. Okay. So I think. We move these to the beginning. Why are you auto stop auto running? equal to care dot uh, py. Then we update the sprite positions. And then we go through and we operate on the velocity. That's fine, that's not a big deal. So everything here operates on velocity. All right, so let me calculate the velocity. Projected X, projected Y, projected Y, projected Y, projected X, projected X, projected Y, projected Y, projected Y, projected X, projected X, projected X. See what that does. I cannot see. This right X can only be set to a number. Oh, it's because it's not set. Is 
that going to fix it? That's interesting. It appears to have fixed it. to be jumping inside the floor anymore okay I guess we fixed it we do like appear to be like a foot under the ground though let me see our character our characters rectangle our bounding box I mean okay it looks like it's flush I think we just need to stand up a little taller Looks good. All right. Well, let's save. All right, we did it. Uh, we can also turn. What is this black box? Oh, that's the render button. I forgot I had that. So I actually, don't. I don't need to talk about this. I have a button for it. Yeah, this turns it on briefly. Okay. Uh, as far as our floor goes, we can actually just turn that off. Floor.hide. Yeah, now we can walk on the grass. Ah, oh, grass walking. Um, let's move it down a little bit. A little more. Let's try 135. Yeah, we're talking. Look at that. Look at that. Looks good. All right. No performance issues that I can tell. So I think we're good for just moving on to like actual game mechanics. Uh huh. All right. Uh, let's bring this coin down. Let's start with just being able to collect coins uh, also let's let's um, for the fun of it let's create another uh, a platform to jump on um, our platform to the collision box uh, zero actually yeah, zero and y plus I'm sure I'll tell you like, how high I can jump. And let's make it 100 wide. And 45. Landed on it. Well, that's a good sign. Oh, oh no. Ah, uh -huh. But to be clear, I can jump on it. But, um,. So because my head is colliding with it, it's like we gotta put you somewhere. So really we just want our feet to collide with things. So let's temporarily turn off, um, so like we're calculating collision on the four corners of her bounding box. Top left, top right, bottom left, and bottom right. So let's turn off top left and top right complicated system at a different point. Okay. 
now we don't teleport to the top when we touch it. Uh, but we do teleport when our feet touch it. We actually only care about the bottom of collision. How would this work? I think like the path of least resistance is just to decrease the height of the collision box. To where is it? To like fifteen or so. So it's less jarring. Ooh, one change that will make a lot of difference. Decrease that slightly more. I'm not sure what the limit is. There's a point at which our projected um, position can pass straight through it. But one change to our collision, which is we only set the velocity y to zero if we're if it's negative. It's less than zero. Let's set it to zero. This will make it so we don't stop when we jump up through a platform. Like this. It only stops us when we fall through it. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Like, if you're watching very closely, there is a very small teleport when your feet touch the black box that teleports you to the top of the black box. But I think this this is this is pretty good. Yeah, let's not move the coin. Instead, let's make platform stairs all the way up to the coin. It'll be more fun. So this will be platform one. Platform two. Let's move it over. 200. Uh, move it up by 300 pixels. Let's try that. I don't know if I can jump that far. Oh, I made it. Cool. Just barely. Bong. Let's do it. And this one can be 200. Bunk, bunk, wah. Bunk, bunk, wah. Bunk, bunk, wah. Okay. We did it. Um, all right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give all of our um, objects a type that represents how the player interacts with them. So blocking, for example, means that you can't fall through them. I'm going to make a... Collider. That's all we have so far, but there may be more later on. 
the coin is going to be trigger and the platform is going to be platform. Oh wait, we need this to be a an object. These new values. It's an enum. And then our coin is also going to be pushed into the collider box, the collisions, the colliders, the colliders. Colliders. Trigger coin dot trigger is equal to. Uh, for the moment, I don't need any inputs, but we'll uh, work on that later. Uh, debug text two is equal to. You got it. Okay. So now we go back to collision. I'm going to turn these back on. Switch based off of uh, what's it called? What's the object called? Colliders of I. Colliders of I dot type. Case uh, collider types dot platform. Break. What if the case is collider types dot trigger. We do colliders of I dot trigger. Oh wait, we need um do you need an if? Platforms only need the, for the last two types of collision. Okay. Is this all good? Unnecessary semicolon. All right, let's try it. You got it. Oh, it worked. Cool. No problems. You got it.
Okay. We did it, guys. We collected the coin. Okay. So now we've got platform types of colliders and trigger types of colliders. Platforms, uh, you can go through the bottom. You can't go through the top. Triggers run code when you touch them. What's next? I guess we should set up some kind of a point system. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Let's uh, discuss like what the game is actually going to be about. Excuse me, everyone. Let's say that there's a going to be a coin at the top, or maybe even a couple different coins, but the goal is to get to the top as fast as possible. Uh, like you, It gives you 10 seconds to get to the top, and you get one point for each coin you manage to collect on the way up. I like that. Um, we can use some randomness with the platforms where they appear, and maybe some randomness with where the coins appear. To create some procedurally generated levels and it should be fun. Cool, let's try it. So, step one is to create um, a score var variable. Var score is equal to zero. And then we want var score text. I know it, like, I don't know why my casing is so weird. I've been writing way too many enums and constants lately. New text. Text becomes equal to score. real quick. See how that works. Coding coins, cool. Alright. So when we touch a coin, score plus plus. delete okay. gosh what is it coin up delete let's try it out ah. Boink. I did not delete the coin it did give me a score though it is very clearly not deleted
Ah, okay. Okay, but it's still showing up. I guess, um... Coin. Got platform. All right. So let's do. box mass dot random um, times say two hundred minus I guess we need um, more like 400 minus 200. with mass.random times 200 and height should always be 15. Let's see what happens. Yeah, all right. 
Well, that height seems wrong. They're all above. Their X variance doesn't seem very good either. I really think that these numbers are gibberish. If I just said max x and max y, what would happen? Mm-hmm, okay. Let's do the same calculation here. X. X. A little more about that. Uh, I'm gonna do divided by two because it seems like we got some that are going off to the right side of the screen a little more. Oh, excuse me, it should be. Wait, shouldn't it be minus? so far to the right. Cool. Oh, <laughs> okay, all right, all right. Well, these numbers seem okay, I guess. I just got really unlucky on this one, so right? Yeah, no, there's more, okay. Well, why did I jump so high? I think I jumped twice. Okay. A slightly smaller range.
this looks pretty good. Okay, cool. All right, we got this, guys. All right, and now, same thing except for coins. Okay, first off, I think the y, the ran, I don't think the random y values are gonna work. Instead, let's do min y plus two hundred plus something times i, like i times fifty. Let's try that. Yeah, yeah, okay. slightly fewer of them. I need yet fewer of them. Yeah, okay. And then the range on this is a little off. Ba 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 So we're going to get rid of our example coin real quick. And our example platforms as well. Does that look? Nice. This looks really good. Oh, this one looks pretty bad. Um, yeah, this one's not possible. Oh my gosh, it fell. <laughs> this is actually moderately fun. Oh yeah, okay. Wow, got it. Coded coins. Bam! Oh okay. this is starting to shape up, guys. Let's do this. Ba 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 ba. How would need this? Okay. Do we still have the problem with coins appearing off screen? It should be three each time. Make sure I can see. Yeah, one of them is off screen. I'm 
addition. Do this times 700 minus 350. That I believe should always keep them within a reasonable area. Okay. Yeah. Did I just fall through a bunch of floors? I did. How did I do that? I fell through that floor. I didn't fall through that floor. Huh. There's probably a speed at which it's um, reasonably likely for you to fall through floors. Cool. 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 Yeah. All right. Uh, so now we need a timer. Cool. I'm writing the code for um, setting up another level, like pushing a button to go to the next level. We're going to have to clear the colliders, and in order to do that, I've got to go through and delete all of the individual sprites. Because as we tested with the coin, just deleting the rectangle does not do it. Uh... So, we're going to iterate through. to zero, i is less than colliders dot length, i plus plus, uh, one more loop, four bar j is equal to zero, j is less than colliders of i dot sprites dot length, j plus plus. Sliders of i dot sprites of j dot delete. Colliders of i dot delete. Okay, that should delete everything. Uh, let's put up a timer. seconds time text time t -t 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 remaining time to minx plus one hundred all right, and then every one second, time minus minus. If time is less than or equal to zero, clear colliders. Let's try it out. 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, draw them out. Got it. Okay, 12, 11, 10. 
seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Oxford's the leading for the list. This doesn't work. What am I doing? Oh, because they don't have sprites. Gotcha. just Crash. All right, well, we crashed. All right, everyone.
I, I know why. It's because we're deleting from WolfJS, not from the array. <sighs> so it's just doing a while loop forever. Um, yeah, I'm going to have to type some stuff in, aren't I? I just lost some progress again. Don't do it. No. Let's see what saved. All right, everyone, I will see you next time. Uh, we are done for the day. Next time, we will uh, finish off this game, maybe move on to something else, maybe make some art, not really sure, but bye-bye.